hello, hello, and welcome back. Today is going to be another TSG breakdown. Um, I'm going to actually probably end up running out of these. I just have to go through them and kind of see what comps I have that are... I'm trying to get the, like, the ones that you see the most, the most meta ones, and bring them to you. And there's going to be a change in season, so that's going to change up um, the meta because there's going to be some changes, but also this team... This TSG team isn't. We're not queuing anymore at the moment. I'm uh, now queuing with some uh, uh, with DH DH Warrior for a bit. So maybe we'll get some of those videos out. But here's going to be another breakdown. This is against um, WMP, a quite common, uh, quite common <coughs> team, and a uh, one that I've played before, so I know how to play against it. So uh, what we're doing here is actually very different to what we normally do. Well, it's not very different, but it's different. So we're not setting up pretty much at all. Um, we're not using uh, Shockwave. We're going double charge to stay on the mage. And so we have our double charge and we have our ranged execute as a means of keeping on this mage and getting the damage done. And what we're going to do is we're just going to sync up our burst. We're going to do like the whole grip and then go off the DK stun with the roots into DK stun. And then just try and keep on this mage and try and get as many cooldowns as we possibly can. Uh, because it's a rep paladin, uh, because no, not a rep paladin, because it's a holy paladin, he's going to be in there trying to heal with melee wings and stuff like that, which allows us to cleave him. What we're trying to do is trying to get them to use too much and put them in an in an awkward position when melee wings ends. Because if they're below, if they're not topped when melee wings is finished, they're going to start using sacks and have to use bops and stuff like that. And then we're going to get through cooldowns pretty nicely. In this game, we do really well, and we uh, kind of jump on some bad positioning by them, and uh, really just push this. It's like, uh, not unlike Cupid, this is very much um, a comp that we find easy. We go the double charge, we keep on the mage, we'll, we, we win this pretty much 100% of the time, unless we manage to screw up. So, I'm going to run you through decision making here for the stuff that we end up doing. Uh, to kind of give you an idea of what what we're thinking of doing in the scenario. So here, like, we have the open up, the warrior comes in. What you don't want to do is overextend over the tomb, especially if your paladin dismounts behind you. Because what happens is the warrior drops over, we just start attacking the warrior. We don't use any bursts at all, We are because we're not going the warrior. The warrior is a terrible target for us. It will allow the mage just to control the whole game, and, like, he's not going to take that much damage. So by going this warrior here and getting some damage in, um, it makes the paladin use his uh, steed to get over here, and Adra is going to be able to get a bash onto him, and then maybe uh, he then he has to, I'm pretty sure he trinkets it, and then straight hodges Adra. So that's their CC chain is already <coughs> not working. <sighs> And because we had so much damage on the warrior, that took that guy together. So not only did we get <coughs> the CC chain was screwed up because the Hodge on the Druid, when he was in in cat form, in a stupid location where the mage wasn't, um, we have a steed off him, we have trinket, and they bops the warrior. And the warrior is not our main target. We haven't popped any offensive cooldowns. So then, as soon as the mage pops, he pops his burst. So we go, all right, we're going on mage. We just rail into the mage. I get the sign, but you can just blade storm it, and we get uh we get temp cauterize a whole lot of stuff out. We have we have <laughs> we have not only have we have bop, we have cauterize melee wings is up. They're in a pretty terrible position. So now what we're looking at here is trying to really assert dominance when this melee wings comes down. Because if the melee wings comes down and they're low, it's going to be really awkward for them. So what we're doing here is they keep going. Their their CC chain is supposed to be Hodge into um, Hodge into Polys into like a fear afterwards. But what we're by riding this mage, we're not letting him get to um, get to our druid to get any Polys out. And our druid's also doing really well in shifting it. He's running tree, so you can't get Polyed in tree. And um, what and then we get we managed to as soon as melee wings ended because we had pressure and we had CDs still running. We got block and we got bubble. So at this point, it's going to be very difficult for them to win this game. We still have tree going, so they have no pressure. And we just keep rolling on this mage. Um, we get some more CC onto the pally because he's playing really close. So he actually catches fears a lot. 
and also just generally will catch damage from this uh, DK because he can't really line because he's playing melee wings, he needs to play quite close. So what we try and do is we're trying to just stop any polys that's going to stop our momentum, keep sharp and blading up just to really put some pressure in, and then uh, just trying to make it so our druid doesn't get a lot of stuff. They blink loads and get the and get a poly onto him, uh, but that's not a big deal. That's the first one they've got on this entire game. Here comes the melee wings to try and top. Dragon's breath just comes out onto us. And we're getting ready to burst again in about 20 seconds. And uh, it turns out that we don't need that burst. Because not because melee wings just coming up. Uh, the mage is already low. It takes him a bit of time to ramp up that healing. Because he needs to deal damage to heal. And uh, our, our pressure is just too high on it. And then the, we had the Pillar of Frost coming out from the DK. We're going to get... Restuns on them. It's kind of a very. It was a very clinical. Okay, let's not rush into this because you often get in cleaves. Teams will rush over like that warrior did. Put yourself in an awkward position. You need to keep your momentum, get it going, get those defensive cooldowns, and really just establish yourself and keep rotating through and get get ahead and get going. And that's how you really push to get um do well as TSG. Control teams don't let teams control you, which is why when you're playing as a mage It's often a really good idea to go the mage because not only does it stop a lot of the damage It also stops a significant amount of CC Off your team because you can kick the polymorphs you can slow him down Maybe he has to use dragon's breath on you to peel himself and then you end up getting more For, for what you need and the warrior is going to be it's going to be harder for the warrior to get his CC or like he doesn't necessarily want to be going for it like a huge amount of time, he doesn't want to be starting a CC chain before he has to burst and weird things like that. It's like as we spoke before, yeah, the ones we starting and finishing it. So the they needed a bit of better synergy with the paladin, stunning him out of form so he could get polymorphs off. But even if he did get a stun out of form, we'd be able to um, keep the polys or grip the poly back because we're not going for that setup against the paladin because he has to come in anyway, and that's when we're going to get the AOE CC on him. Because that'll be peeling his main wings, which is main healing cooldown, which is going to draw out the sacks and the bubbles and everything like that, as we did, as we saw there. So I hope that this is going to be a really quick video. Um, I hope it was uh, interesting and useful. Uh, appreciate you guys. Peace. Hello there, and thanks for watching my video. Make sure to subscribe if you like what you see, and like if you liked it, dislike if you don't. Please comment to uh, let me know what you want to see in the future and uh, make sure to uh, come tune in and watch me on Twitch. I'm live from 12 a.m. or 12 midnight uh, GMT for normally about six hours playing a whole bunch of games. Hopefully I'll see you there.